Glasgow University scientists unveil artificial skin breakthrough. Prosthetic limbs with near-human levels of touch sensitivity could be developed after this technological breakthrough. The team from the University of Glasgow has developed artificial skin, which mimics the nervous system and can learn from feeling pain. Experts say it could lead to the creation of a new generation of smart robots. Humans learn early in their lives to respond appropriately to pain in order to prevent them from hurting themselves again. The team was able to make a robot hand recoil from a sharp jab in the center of its palm. Engineers developed artificial skin with a new type of processing system based on synaptic transistors, which mimics the brain's neural pathways in order to learn. In a new paper published in Science Robotics, researchers described how they built their prototype computational electronic skin and how it improves on the current state-of-the-art in touch-sensitive robotics. Scientists have been working for decades to build artificial skin with touch sensitivity, including spreading an array of contact or pressure sensors across the electronic skin surface to allow it to detect when it comes into contact with an object. Data from the sensors is then sent to a computer to be processed and interpreted. The sensors typically produce a large volume of data which can take time to be properly processed and responded to, introducing delays which could reduce the skin's potential effectiveness in real-world tasks. This new form of electronic skin draws inspiration from how the human peripheral nervous system interprets signals from skin in order to eliminate latency. As soon as human skin receives an input, the peripheral nervous system begins processing it at the point of contact, reducing it to only the vital information before it is sent to the brain. The reduction of sensory data allows efficient use of communication channels needed to send the data to the brain, which then responds almost immediately for the body to react appropriately. To build an electronic skin, researchers printed a grid of 168 synaptic transistors made of zinc oxide nanowires directly onto a flexible plastic surface and connected the synaptic transistor with the skin sensor present over the palm of a fully articulated human-shaped robot hand. When the sensor is touched, it registers a change in its electrical resistance, for which a small change corresponds to a light touch, and a harder touch creates a larger change in resistance. This input is designed to mimic the way sensory neurons work in the human body. In earlier generations of electronic skin, this data would be sent to a computer for processing. Instead, a circuit built into the skin acts as an artificial synapse, reducing the input down into a simple spike of voltage whose frequency varies, according to the level of pressure applied to the skin, speeding up the process of reaction. The team used the varying output of voltage spikes to teach the skin appropriate responses to simulated pain, which would trigger the robot hand to react. By setting a threshold of input voltage to cause a reaction, the team could make the robot hand recoil from a sharp jab in the center of its palm. In other words, it learned to move away from a source of simulated discomfort through a process of onboard information processing that mimics how the human nervous system works. The development of the electronic skin is the latest breakthrough in flexible, stretchable, printable surfaces. What they've been able to create through this process is an electronic skin capable of distributed learning at the hardware level, which doesn't need to send messages back and forth to a central processor before taking action. This greatly accelerates the process of responding to touch by cutting down the amount of computation required. The researchers say that this represents a real step forward in their work towards creating large-scale neuromorphic printed electronic skin. In the future, this research could be the basis for a more advanced electronic skin, which could enable robots to become capable of exploring and interacting with the world in new ways, or building prosthetic limbs which are capable of near-human levels of touch sensitivity. Engineers create an AI chip that can process and classify nearly 2 billion images per second. Artificial intelligence plays an important role in many systems, from predictive text to medical diagnosis. In traditional neural networks used for image recognition, the image of the target object is first formed on an image sensor, such as a digital camera or smartphone. Then, the image sensor converts light into electrical signals, and ultimately into the binary data, which can then be processed, analyzed, stored, and classified using computer chips. Speeding up these abilities is key to improving any number of applications, such as face recognition, automatically detecting text and photos, or helping self-driving cars recognize obstacles. While current consumer-grade image classification technology on a digital chip can perform billions of computations per second, more sophisticated image classification, such as identifying moving objects, 3D object identification, or classification of microscopic cells in the body, are pushing the computational limits of even the most powerful technologies. The current speed limit of these technologies is set by the clock-based schedule of computation steps in a computer processor, where computations occur one after another on a linear schedule. To address this limitation, Penn engineers have created the first scale 
scalable chip that classifies and recognizes images almost instantaneously. The engineers have removed the four time consuming culprits in the traditional computer chip, which are the conversion of optical to electrical signals, the need for converting the input data to binary format, a large memory module, and the clock based computations. They've achieved this through direct processing of light received from the object of interest using an optical deep neural network implemented on a 9.3 square millimeter chip. The study published in Nature, which is called an on chip photonic deep neural network for image classification, describes how the chip's many optical neurons are interconnected using optical wires or waveguides to form a deep network of many neuron layers mimicking that of the human brain. Information passes through the layer of the network, with each step helping to classify the input image into one of the learned categories. In the researchers' study, the images the chip classified were hand-drawn, letter-like characters. Just like the neural network in our brains, this deep network is designed in a way that allows for rapid information processing. The researchers demonstrated that their chip can perform an entire image classification in half a nanosecond, which is the time it takes digital computer chips to complete just one computation step in their clock-based schedule. The researchers say that their chip processes information through what they call computation by propagation, meaning that computations occur as light propagates through the chip. They're also skipping the step of converting optical signals to electrical signals because the chip can read and process optical signals directly, and both of these changes make the chip a significantly faster technology. The chip's ability to process optical signals directly lends itself to another benefit. When current computer chips process electrical signals, they often run them through a graphics processing chip, or GPU, which takes up space and energy. The chip that the researchers have designed does not need to store the information, eliminating the need for a large memory unit. By eliminating the memory unit that stores the images, they're also increasing data privacy. With chips that read image data directly, there's no need for photo storage and thus a data leak does not occur. A chip that reads information at light speed and provides a higher degree of cybersecurity would undoubtedly have an impact in many fields. This is one of the reasons research into this technology has ramped up in the past several years. While the researchers weren't the first to be able to come up with the technology that reads optical signals directly, they were the first to create the complete system within a chip that is both compatible with existing technology and scalable to work with more complex data. The chip, with its deep network design, requires training to learn and classify new data sets, similar to how humans learn. When presented with a given data set, the deep network takes the information and classifies it into previously learned categories. This training needs to strike a balance that is specific enough to result in accurate image classifications and general enough to be useful when presented with new datasets. The engineers can scale up the deep network by adding more neural layers, allowing the chip to read data in more complex images with higher resolution. While this chip will advance current image sensing technology, it can be used for countless applications across a variety of data types. It's already known how to convert many data types into the electrical domain, images, audio, speech, and many other data types. Now, they can convert different data types into the optical domain and have them processed almost instantaneously using this technology. To understand just how fast the chip can process information, think of a typical frame rate for movies. A movie usually plays between 24 to 120 frames per second. In comparison, this chip would be able to process nearly 2 billion frames per second. The next step for these researchers is to examine the scalability of the chip as well as work on three-dimensional object classification. They are also considering looking into classifying non-optical data. While image classification is one of the first areas of the research for this chip, it certainly won't be the last. After this, the researchers plan to venture into the realm of classifying non-optical data to accelerate different types of computations.